one life you have will count. This one life you have will be to God's glory. This one life, only one life, will be a blessing to your generation, a blessing to humanity. Only one life. And this one life will soon be gone. You will not be here forever. I will not be here forever. The people that lived 200 years ago are gone. 1,000 years ago are gone. We soon shall be gone. What legacy will you leave behind? What will people say about you? Why don't you pray today that, Lord, help me that this one life I have will not be like a vapor that appeared for a moment and vanished away without a trace. Make me a blessing to myself. Make me a blessing to my generation. Bless me, O oh Lord. And help me to grow up in you through you and for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you for such an opportunity and privilege we have to come before the throne of grace and make ourselves available unto you to work on us and to work through us. Father, we pray that everything that needs to be taken out of our lives, everything that needs to be purged out of our lives, by the power of your might, do it in Jesus' name. And every grace we need, every resources we need, every anointing we need to be a blessing given to us in Jesus' name. Speak to us as we share together now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last week we came together and we shared together on the mission and the ministry of the church. And we looked at the purpose of the church. We looked at the ministry of the church, both ministry within and ministry without. And we look at the last part of it was on maturity within the church. And I would like to build on that. Because it is one thing for the church to come together and think, our ministry is only to outsiders, the, believe, the unbelievers out there. Bring them to the church. After you have brought them to the church, what next? And I told us that part of the ministry of the church is to grow that believer, to mature that believer, to equip that believer, and to empower that believer. We talked about some things then. And we need to understand that it will be very, very disastrous for anyone to have been in the church for one whole year, for five years, for ten years, and that person is not better than somebody who just came to Christ one week ago. Two days ago, that person is not growing. And if that person is not growing, it is an indication that that person does really not have the life of God. I said that because there is an old saying that every living thing grows. Do you agree with that? If that thing is alive, if that thing is living, it will grow. But if that thing is dead, dead things don't grow. I pray you will not be dead in Jesus' name. And when we come into the church, many a times we forget that we have different levels and categories of people in the church. During the prayer session, the pastor that ran it up made us to know that the church is like an hospital. And different people are in the hospital, but much more than an hospital. The church is a family. 
and in the family, you have the father, you have the mother. And uh, if that family has been for a while, you have some children that are grown up and uh, maybe getting to maturity. And then you have some that are babes. You have infants in the church. I mean, in the family. And so, in the family, you have all class of people, categories of people in the family. The church is also another family, but a spiritual family. And in this spiritual family, we have the babes in Christ. We have the young people. You have the young adults. We have the elderly, the mature people, the grown-up people, and the all of us together will form the family, but please understand also that in this family, we have people that does not know the difference between their left and their right. But many a times we come together, we treat everybody alike. We talk to everybody alike. We relate with everybody, everybody alike just because we call everybody brother, sister. May I tell you today? That is not everybody in the church that qualifies for that title, a brother. It's not everybody in the church that qualifies for that title, a sister. But maybe just to make everybody feel belong. But you know yourself, I know myself. And if you are born again, it's not enough for you to just say, well, praise God on this particular day. I accepted, accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. That is good. But is that the end to life? Are you growing? Or it is just a matter of being born and there is no feeding. There is no milk. There is no nurturing. There is no caring. There is no clothing. There is no instruction. There is no direction. And pay attention, there is no correction. In a typical family, God set up family and God's church family. All these things are there. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4. It's where we are going to concentrate on. But before we get into Ephesians chapter 4, let me quickly tell us what I have explained in 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. It says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you. Stop right there. Look up here at me. It says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you. May I tell you, and without apology to anybody, that if you're in this church, no matter how long you have been in the church, no matter how long you have been with the church, no matter what you even give to the church, no matter what you do in the church, if you are not born again and your sins are not forgiven, you will roast in hellfire. Because except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. He says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. That means then, if you are not born again, if your sins are not forgiven, you are not one of the children of God. Look at it again. I write unto you, little children. You are still, you are still little Maybe you are 60 years old, but you just gave your life to Christ. You are still little in the family of God. Maybe you are 40 years old, even 70 years old. You are a new baby, a new convert. Pay attention here. For the fact that you had the knowledge of the Bible does not translate unto salvation. For the fact that you went to school and maybe you did Bible study or religious studies and then you got a, 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 a in that class does not translate into you becoming a born again. You must repent of your sins. You must confess your sin. You must renounce your sin. You must receive Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior and that done, you don't go back into that life of sin anymore. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Come back to First John again. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 
for his name's sake, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning, from the beginning of your work with him, from the beginning of your relationship with him, from the beginning of your conversion, from the beginning of your journey to heaven, because you have known him that is from the beginning, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the father. At conversion, you know the father. At conversion, the father is revealed unto you. And then verse 14, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abide in you. And ye have overcome the wicked one. Praise the Lord. You are young in Christ. You are young in faith. When you are living for God. When you daily overcome trials and temptation. That is when you are you. He says you are strong. He said because you are strong. You are strong in your conviction. You are strong in your devotion. You are strong in your, in your commitment. You are strong in the service of the Lord. You are strong in prayer. You are strong in the love for the brethren, the love for God. You are strong in standing for the truth and for righteousness. He said, I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong. There are temptations and trials in the world. And many young people have forsaken the faith, but you are strong. You are standing for the truth. You are standing for righteousness. You are standing for God, and you will not allow anything, anywhere to hamper or dampen your faith and your spirit, young men. Because ye are strong. Joseph, as a young man, was sold into Egypt. He was in crisis. He was in trouble. Yet, because of that strength of God in him, because of that courage of God in him, because of the faith of God in him, over there in a strength that he stood his ground, because he was strong, not the physical energy, like all the many of the young people now they are carrying with because they want to get energy. That is not strength. That is not what we are talking about. Because you are strong in determination to follow the Lord true and true. Esther was a lady. And then she became one of the captives in Shishan. And uh, things were happening and Esther soon stood her ground. While all other ladies in the land were embellishing themselves and dressing in a certain way and acting in a certain way and mingling and tingling in a certain way, Esther stood her ground. Young ladies, you will stand your ground. Whether you are in America or, you know, some people, they think, well, that is deeper life. They are so conser conservative. Uh, uh, if you go to deeper life, you can't have friends. Who told you you can't have friends? Look at all the, all the people here. You are all my friends. I say you are my friends. Praise the Lord. But they think because you don't act like them, you don't talk like them, you don't dress like them, you don't party like them, that you don't have friends. No, I better have God as my friend than have the whole world as a friend. And Esther stood her ground. And Esther did not follow the pattern and the practice of the people of the time. And God favored Esther. There is somebody here that God is going to favor. And then you see, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they also were in captivity, far away from home, far away from father, far away from mother, far away from even their pastor that can say, you can do this, you can do that. But because of the strength in them, because of that grace of God, because uh, they are ready for God no matter the situation. They stood for God. Even when the king said, your life is at stake. They said, oh king, we are not careful in this matter. The God whom we serve is able to deliver us. Even if he does not. Yet, oh king, we submit to his sovereignty. We submit, we submit to his power. We submit to his will. We submit to his wisdom. He has the power, but if in his wisdom he chooses not to deliver us, we know he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. So, oh king, we will not bow. You will not bow. There are a lot of gods in this land. You will not bow to them. 
I say you not bow to them. In the name of Jesus, the God of fashion. That is running the young people of our time crazy. The God of money that everybody is pursuing and running after. The God of position and power that many pastors and ministers are, are, are questing for. In the name of wanting to have a big church, you may get the biggest church in the world. If your name is not in the book of life, you and your congregation will end up in hellfire. That is why, please, when you come over here, we are more interested in your spiritual growth and maturity. And there are some people, they will say, well, that church, they care so much. Physical caring. They will care for your body. They will care for your physical need. But spiritually, you will roast in hellfire. I told you, we shall not be here forever. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. You want to sit down and look at your life. Which one is more important? My spiritual life or my physical life? And so... The, uh, the, uh, the, the father of faith here, John, was writing now in verse 15. And pay attention. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman, if any student, if any young person love the world, if any father, if any mother love the world, uh, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the loss of the flesh and the loss of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lost thereof. Everybody read the last thing. But he that doeth the will of God abideth. Pay attention. When it says abideth forever, it doesn't mean you are going to live in this world forever. But over there in heaven, you cross to eternity. You will be with God. You will live with God. And uh, that will be forever and ever in Jesus' name. Do we have people in our church? That have been in this church for 10 years, for 20 years, maybe for 30 years. And the pride of life is still in them. They are not matured. They are more than likely not born again. It doesn't matter how many Bibles they know. It doesn't matter how much they can quote the Bible. It doesn't matter how they can conform to deeper life dressing and action and method of walking and acting. It doesn't matter. And they are proud. And they are not humble. And they're not meek. And they're not gentle. And they're not lowly at heart. And they are not corrigible. You can correct them. You can instruct them. You can direct them. They are not mature. Maybe they knew the law, but they lost that experience. Maybe they were growing, but something happened and they are out of the way. But because they're very good, they know what we want. Deeper life, you cover your head, they cover the head. Deeper life, you walk gently, they walk gently. Deeper life, you talk in a certain way. Uh -uh, those are things you can practice and mimic. Even the activists, they do all those things. Uh, the artists, they do all those things. Uh, and then people playing drama, they can do all of all those things. It is when situation happens. It is when things happen that we now know who you are. When the time comes, heaven will approve you. I said heaven will approve you. Love not the world. You are born again. Under the care of your father and your mother. The moment as a student, you not got into college. You forgot about the teaching of salvation. You forgot about the teaching of sanctification. You forgot the teaching on dressing. You forgot about humility. You forgot everything. And then you see all these wayward students. Godless students. And then because they go to church. And maybe they call it Pentecostal. Because they go to church, maybe they speak in tongues. And you say, oh, oh, they are Christians as we are. You wait until you get to the other side. They are born again. You wait until you cross to eternity. And yet, once you cross over, there is no returning. Lost and lost to eternity. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. And so we understand that the Apostle John identifies three levels of growth uh, in a, a maturity that relates to the human development. He says there are children, there are young people, and then there are adults. Uh, and uh, somebody said that uh, children are immature. Pay attention. 
if you are a child in the faith, there are certain things you don't know. Your fathers in the faith know, know better than you. May I say this? If you're a worker in the church, you think you know so much, there are certain things you still don't know that your pastor knows about you, that knows about the church, that knows about the world. And that is why we need to be careful. Children are immature. Young people are inexperienced. Inexperienced. And then adults are incredible. Well, that is just a quote. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And that is why the Apostle Peter in 2 John chapter 3, verse 18, uh, which is actually the, 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 the last verse there, it says, but grow in grace. You will grow in grace. He said, go in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. And the church say, Amen. Amen. So it's not enough for you to just say you came to church. We want you to be who God wants you to be in the church. It's not enough for you to say, I am born again. Not every child that is born into this world is healthy. Not every child that is born into this world is growing. Not every child is maturing. We are going to look at three points together. Number one, meaning and the means of believers' maturity. The meaning. What does it mean? And by what means are believers to mature or maturing? Number two, the manner. And the method of maturing the believers. The manner and the method of maturing believers. And uh, number three, the motives and the merit of believers' maturity. The motive. What is the motive behind it? The merit. What are the benefits that comes along with believers' maturity? What is maturity? The meaning. Point number one, the meaning and the means of believers' maturity. Maturity is a state of growth into adulthood that demonstrates wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in our relationship with God, in our dealings with fellow humanity, and in the handling of situations in life. Handling of situations in life. Maturity. It's one thing that we all need in our life because it is one thing to be born again. It's another thing to grow and mature appropriately in the right way. It is one thing to have knowledge. Knowledge. And understand knowledge perfect up. Knowledge makes people proud. It is another thing to have understanding of the knowledge that you have. And now, wisdom is the right application of the knowledge that you have to God's glory. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. When we talk of believers' maturity, understand again that as a child, you must be born again first. You must be born again. What did I just say? If you are not born again, you are not yet a child. And that is why John said, I write not to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven. Before you live here today, if you are not yet born again, I didn't say if you don't go to church. I didn't say if you don't read the Bible. I can tell you for so many years of my life, I went to church. I read the Bible until 1981 when God met with me. If you've been here for long, I tell you. Before 1981, I was already a minister in a church. I was talking and preaching about God that I had no relationship with. I went for a meeting somewhere to get better trained in the ministry. It was there God arrested me, and I knew the difference between religion and righteousness. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Comparing yourself with other people is not going to get you to heaven. Comparing this church with any other church will not get you to heaven. May I say this? May I say this? Comparing 
this part of deeper life with another part of deeper life will not get you to heaven. To get to heaven, you need personal holiness, personal righteousness, personal purity, personal uprightness. Except a man, that man, that man, not even the church as a group. Do I tell you this? There is no name deeper life in heaven. Is it just a way of identifying ourselves and differentiating us one from another here on earth? Once you cross over to the other side and you, you stop breathing, you're on your own. But you will not regret in the name of Jesus. So you must be born again. You must be born again. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And for you to mature now, understand, the means of maturing believer is not outside of the church. And maybe you are looking at, they do this over there, they do that over there. Uh, the means of maturity is within the church. All believers need to come to God's standard of growth and maturity. And uh, those of us that are in the ministry, choir ministry, ushery ministry, maybe the media ministry, or whatsoever, children ministry, please, we need to understand also that when we talk about believers' maturity within the church, understand this is a family, we all must work together. We don't work independent of one another. And anything and everything that everyone does should be towards the same purpose. You know some people, they are in the church, and then they, have, they want to have their own ministry from outside of the church. What purpose are you serving? We serve Christ the King. I say we serve Christ the King. And it will keep us to the very end in Jesus' name. The means of believer security should be what the church, through the word of God, commands. Not our own idea. Not our own will. Not our own way. Not our own method. And that, with that, we go into Ephesians. I told you. Our main concentration is going to be in Ephesians today, chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, as I talk about ministry. Understand that God has called you into that ministry. And God has called you for a purpose in that ministry. And God has put you under a bigger ministry. And uh, you must submit yourself to higher authority, and then the blessings of the Lord will come upon you in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 4, I read from verse 4. Ephesians chapter 4, there, uh, from verse 4, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and the Father of all, who is above all, and through all, and in you all. But unto, to every man, unto every one of us, is given grace. You receive the grace of God. According to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he, has, now that he ascended, what is it? but that he also descended forth into the lower parts of the earth. He that ascended is the same also that, uh, he that descended is also the one that ascended up far above all heaven, that he might feel all things. And verse 11, everybody read, let's read together. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors, and some teachers. For the perfecting of the saints. That is it. That is it. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Christ. Verse 13. One more time. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto what? A perfect man. Can you see the growth, the development, the maturing? Unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. 
that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth and law may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ the Lord will keep us the Lord will help us the Lord will use us in Jesus name First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. And God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, governments, diversities, of tongues. Now you see that all these things are there in the church for the perfecting of the saints, for the maturing of the saints, for the growth of the church. And if you are in the church, you need to understand that you must grow, and by the grace of God, you will grow. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 18, verses 24 to 28. Acts chapter 18. By what means are we to mature the believers in the church? Acts 18.24 And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandra, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the word of the Lord. Look at it, verse 25. This man was instructed in the word of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla heard, they took him unto them and expanded unto him the word of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. You will get a good testimony. Who, when he was come, helped them much which had believed. Them which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly be a public believer. I said be a public believer. Showing by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Pay attention here. Maturing the believers. Apollos was eloquent. Eloquence is not enough. It's not enough. You can be eloquent and you lack all that you need to know. But when there is this grace to be humble, the grace to be meek, to be lowly. You know some people, and I need to talk to us, maybe they say, well, let's, let's, let's talk as a family. And uh, they say, I am from deeper life in so and so. Let's say they are from wherever. And then they come, and what they do is, they become inspector general. Instead of them to sit down to learn, instead of them to understand how are things done in this environment, they will want what they are exporting from the other country to be done over here. They don't understand what is cross-cultural evangelism. They don't understand. They don't understand that maybe they have been so busy over there now you need to sit down and learn at the feet of the master. And they judge this and they judge this and they judge this. And who has made it to be a judge? And I say to people, if there is nothing going on, will you have anything to come and judge? Appreciate the work going on. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Apollos was not a proud person. Apollos came in contact with us, uh, with, um, what are the names now? Aquila and Priscilla. Priscilla and Aquila. The couple. 
they are not babes in the Lord. Apollos was a young man, full of energy, eloquent, able to do this and that. But Priscilla and Aquila, they have been through trains in life. They've gotten some experiences. They've been born at some other time. And they know more about Christ. And then when they met with Apollos, they brought him in. And then they expounded more unto him the things of God. And Apollos did not say, well, what are you doing? I am charismatic, you are not. I am grammatic, you are not. I am handsome, you are not. I, uh, if you know this much, why are you still where you are? No, not Apollos. Apollos listened. He learned. You will learn. I said you will learn. That is when you know people that are matured and people that are immature. You know some people like that, they will, they will refuse and reject anything and everything you are trying to tell them. You know, years back, a lady came from our World Health Quarter and um, came over here and saw these beautiful believers that God is raising up in America. Did you just miss that? I said beautiful believers that God is raising up in America. Amen. But they have their mindset that maybe every believer in America is backslidden. Deeper life is not the real deeper life. We are. And then she came and openly confronted us. And on what? Not because... We are incredible to lie, not because we teach about divorce and marriage, just because sisters in deeper life, America wears hats. Just because we wear hats, we are sinners, we are backsliders. And she was ready to engage anybody to, and to fight anything. And I said, Sister, we don't have to fight because of that. Tell, turn to someone and say, Tell somebody, we don't have to fight because of that. If you want to use tapolin to cover your head, God bless your soul. You are not committing any sin. Amen? And if another person wants to use leaf to cover her head, God bless her soul. Amen? And uh, again, I saw that even though she's been long in the job, but immaturity is there. We handle her with maturity. Amen. That is something today. She's one of the best workers I have today. And her heart right now is more beautiful than some of your hearts. <laughs> Somebody say maturity. There are some things we don't have to fight about. Just, just look at it as that is immature. Covering head. The Bible says cover your head. What did the Bible say you should use to cover your head? Tell me. It didn't tell you anything. Amen? So it's not up to you. And some will fight. In our church, we don't use berets. Praise God. That is just church culture. Are you with me? That's just church tradition. It is not the Bible doctrine. And they will fight and fight because of that. But we are maturing. I say we are maturing. Yeah. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Maturity. Maturity. Uh, you know, there was a time here that uh, somebody will come to church and then because there are some new people that God is, is, is wanting to bless with salvation and equip and empower with grace and with glory that are newly coming, but they are babes in Christ. Or maybe some of them are not even money getting just coming. But this person see them coming, and when they come, when they come, they come with their hair uncovered. When they come, they come with their pants. When they come, they come with their jewelry. And somebody will stand at the door. Inspector General of Police. Very committed, deeper life. We go and buy his calf. Keep and bring. If you are coming in, you are not a member of the church, but you are coming, walking into our church, you must not walk into the church bareheaded. 
And then, whether she bought the scars or she brought them from her house, I don't even know. And then she will say, please, you have to cover your head. Give scarf. Do I know the kind of scarf you are giving? If I were any of them, I would walk back from that door. Because I don't know what you have done with the scarf you are giving me. And my head is the crown and the glory of my life. Let somebody say amen to that. Amen. Let them come. What did I just say? Amen. Let them come as they are. When they come and they are born again, when they come and God convict them of these things, nobody is going to force them. They will give them up. Amen? I tell people, I gave up a lot of things, not because anybody told me, give this up, give that up, give that up, uh, but because God convicted me of those things. You had me, spiritual maturity. When I gave my life to Christ, it wasn't in deeper life. And the church I was going, they don't know about salvation or righteousness. But the Holy Ghost made me to know, honey, this Afro style is not of me. Give it up. I gave it up. This uh, James Brown, if you still remember James Brown, amen. Amen. If you think you were worldly, I was. But when I came to Christ, I didn't know about deeper life right away. But the Lord convicted me. Do I tell you this? At that time, God knew it is later I got to know that deeper life said don't watch television. That time, and I'm telling you the truth, I lie now. The Lord ministered to me, if you stay with this television, your life will be ruined. Give it up. And I gave it up. But you know, people will say it is deeper life. When you are genuinely converted, therefore, if any man be in Christ, He's a new creature. Old things are passed. They will behold all things are become new. That is why, you know, unfortunately, when you see some people today, if uh, something happened, they live deeper life. Next week, you see them outside there, you will wonder if they ever passed through the, the street of deeper life before. The kind of dressing, the kind of everything. The reason is, they never got convicted by the Holy Ghost. They were just following the crowd. You will not follow the crowd. I say you will not follow the crowd. In the name of Jesus, let the people come in. Let them hear the word of God. We always say, you have to get the fish from outside of the water first before you begin to skin it. So when people come to our church, let us love them. What they need is what? They need love, the love of God. They need affection. They need attention. They need reception. Let us receive them. No matter how they come. They come with their head cover, leave them alone. Tell somebody, leave them alone. They come with their pants, leave them alone. And you know what I'm talking about? It's going to be on the internet. They're going to hear it all over the world. And I am saying, when somebody is now touched and convicted by God, they will run faster than you. They will give up more than what you thought you have given up. Some of you, it is church that made you to give up anything. But when God made them to give it up, no matter where they are, they remain convicted by that conviction. And that's what, that is real genuine conversion. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But you know, the immature people, they made themselves inspector general of the church. You are fired. Did you hear what I just said? What happened to all the inspectors? They are fired in Jesus' name. This church will grow. I said this church will grow in Jesus' name. Some are even saying that we preach too hard in this church. Amen? And uh, those of you that are newly coming, listen to me, you will preach harder than I do. You will preach harder than Pastor Kumoyi. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Colossians chapter 1 verse 25. Wherefore I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you, for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, among the unbelievers, which is Christ in you, everybody. The hope of glory, verse 20, whom we preach, warning every man, and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man how perfect in Christ Jesus. It will happen again. 
Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth his chastenance. Maybe some of you are already getting mad and say, why is the pastor talking to us this morning? Maybe I need to do more of it. Maybe I need to chastise you more. You know the reason why? Because I love you. Because God loves you. God loves this church. God wants to build this church. Amen. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then are ye who? Bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh, which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. We gave them honor. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded a peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Pay attention here. There are times as a church that the leadership of the church will make some corrections. Maybe even disciplining people because of one thing or the other. And the immature people, immature leaders, immature workers will go behind contradicting the church. Shame on you. You are not matured. You have spiritual kwachoko. You need to grow. You need to understand the place of correction, the purpose of correction, the power of correction. Give them room to repent. Give them the opportunity to make right their ways before the Lord. When correction comes with, from a sincere heart, from a sincere father, it is for the good of the people. For the good of the people. You know, sometimes ago, somebody did something wrong and was corrected. But because he was a man of the people, and many were in support. Why this? Why this? Why that? And uh, the person also got so carried away that he was making some moves. But down the line, down the line, down the line, and by the grace of God, the leadership stood the ground. If you want to go because of this, you are free to go. The word of God must stand. Amen. I said the word of God must stand. Amen. And eventually, the person came back and said, sir, I am back. I said, back to where? I'm back to the church. What happened? And the person said, I don't know what came on me. That is not me. Sometimes you don't know where the devil is manipulating people. And the devil is using you to destroy their lives. And you not allow them to pray. And then you go to them secretly. And you communicate with them. And God is saying, you are not helping the work of the kingdom. You are destroying the work that is being built. Chastening may not be easy. And the Bible says we all get it at some point of our life. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. But you know, some of those that felt that individual should go and perish, don't submit to discipline, don't submit to correction, the person came and said, I'm ready. Whatever the church is ready to do, I'm ready. Praise God. Some of those people, they said, no, we will not come back with you. And when you see them today, their life is terrible. Terrible. The enemy deceived them. You will not be deceived. Spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. The Lord will keep us. The Lord will help us. In Jesus' name. I get to the second point, manner and method of ma maturing the believers. Manner and method of believers' maturity. There are many areas in which the believers shall experience growth and maturity. The definite Christian experiences salvation, sanctification, Holy Ghost baptism, 
helps us to have the life of Christ and aid our growth in Christ. This experiences does not necessarily bring us onto instant maturity, but they prepare us for growth and lead us towards maturity. This is what I'm talking about. That you are born again does not mean you are matured. That you got admitted into a school does not mean you know everything about the school. That you are sanctified does not mean you are matured already. That you speak in tongue does not mean you are mature already. There are many people that speak in tongue. I don't even know whether it is speaking in Holy Spirit or evil spirit. But they speak in one tongue or the other. And maybe you don't understand that demonic people speak in tongues. And it's not everywhere you go, you see them speaking in tongues, that it is the Holy Spirit of God. Before I gave my life to Christ, I was in a church. The church where I was raised. They don't talk about salvation, just everything religion, religion, religion. And they were speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. The day I knew my time was up in this place. You want to know the day? I wasn't even born again then. Was when one stood up speaking in tongues and prophesying and talking about another person in the congregation. The secret things the person was doing. And all of a sudden, I'm not talking about stories I had, I'm talking about things I witnessed. Do I tell you something? I was one of the drummers in the church. And then the person she was talking about sitting at the back of the, of the hall also got into the spirit. You will not get into evil spirit. Also got into the spirit and then wah, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. And then began to talk again. And all of a sudden, they switched from speaking in tongues to speaking in the language you understand. And this one said, it's a lie. I will deal with you. Somebody say amen. amen. And before I tell you the truth, I lie on that is why some of you, when you see some new thing, you, you, run, you get lost. No wonder you are lost. And while that was going on, the singing stopped. <laughs> the drumming stopped. Now we know we are in trouble. The pastor was confused, not knowing what to do. And all of a sudden, they did not come near one another. This one here did not live there. The other one did not live there. And all of a sudden, with the battle in the spirit, the one in the front was flipped, boom, on the floor. And she passed out. And then you want to tell me, they speak in tongues in that church. Ah, which tongue? You better pray and get the return from God. You better pray and get the, the real Holy Ghost. You say, because I've been praying, nothing has happened. You need to pray more. And get the real thing from God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 The Lord will keep us. The Lord will help us. The Lord will preserve us in Jesus' name. The Bible speaks of growth and maturity in and by means of prayer. Some of us, we want it cheap. We want it cheap. Please understand, I believe in laying on of hands. But be careful of who is laying hands on you. Because you want miracle, lay hands on you. You want it to speak in tongue, they lay hands on you. The trouble you thought you have will be nothing compared to the one they will be downloading on you. Be careful. Go through the process. Pray and pray through. Let God touch you by the power of his mind. Let God meet you at the point of your need. In the name of Jesus. Uh, maybe some of you, because you are looking for a job, then you go to everywhere they say they are having meetings, they are having night vigil, they are having this and that. You run over there. Listen to this. And I wonder if people like that, some of them are really genuinely born again. Because Jesus came, and then the day he died on the cross, the veil 
on the altar was rent into two. And every believer from then, from then, have access to the throne of grace themselves. They don't have to go through any pastor or any minister anymore. But people still want, what says the Lord? What says the Lord? And what has God told you yourself? To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to the words of this prophecy, it is because there is no truth in them. If you are born again, call on God. Cry unto God. Cry unto God. Instead of running from pillar to post. And some people, their lives are not right with God. It's because they are not spiritually matured. Their lives are not right with God. And they think it is when somebody is praying for them that prayer will be answered. Pay attention here. If that person you are groaning to is not using evil power. If they are true servants of God, the prayers they pray is a prayer unto God. Am I communicating? It is God that will send the answer from heaven. And if your life is not right with God, you are wasting the time of the minister of God. Make right your ways. If God be for us, who can be against us? I had a dream. I saw a lizard and a monkey pursuing me. It must be a witch in the family. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? And then you became restless and peaceless and everything. When the Bible says that whatsoever you shall decree shall be established unto you. Amen? When the Bible says that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And you are a believer, you are immature. And then you, you are troubled you are helpless. And there are some of you that you always think uh, somebody is after me, this one is after me, this one is after me. You know, I don't know who is after you, but I know who is after me. The Holy Ghost is after me. Amen. 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 The Holy Ghost is after me. And that is why I fear no foe. Can I help somebody here today? How many of you want to make it to heaven? If you are not ready, don't, don't fake it. Don't fake it. Praise God. Amen. You want to make it to heaven. Praise God. Do I tell you something? Put down your hands. God bless you. Put down your hands. If you're a real believer, amen, and you die suddenly, you get into heaven suddenly. Welcome, deeper life. I had only one person say amen. amen. And you want to go to heaven. Tell your neighbor you are not ready. <laughs> sudden death, sudden glory. Sudden death. If we really believe in this heaven, amen, please walk and labor and prepare as if Jesus will never come. But be ready as if Jesus is coming the next minute. Amen? And he will help us. He will keep us. In Jesus' name. So we need to understand that we need prayer. We need the word of God. I told you last week, I'm going to tell you again. If we are this many today, you come tomorrow and see how many are coming for Bible study. To grow in grace, to mature, we need the study of the word of God. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It is when you have the word of God in you that he that is in you will be greater than he that is in the world. It is when you have the word of God in you that you know uh, how to stand in times of trial, in times of temptation, in times of challenge. How to stand and stand strong. It is when you have the word of God in you that to be able to be your best for the glory of God. We grow by the word of God. Not that alone, by the exercise of faith. Exercise of faith. 
you know, don't just be a baby Christian and a bread and butter Christian that always want uh, put people to pray for you. We pray for you. Please understand. Please understand. We will do our part. Someone said, God forbid that I should cease or stop praying for you. We will do our part. But pay attention, please. Things will happen in your life that will help you to know what level are you in your Christian world. Exercise faith. How do you exercise faith? How do you exercise faith? Believe God for something. Focus on that thing. Pursue that thing. Believe God for that thing. Believe God for that thing. And then what do you do? Believe God for that thing. And it will happen. Faith. Faith. Believe you can live a holy life. If you don't believe it, you will never be able to live it. Believe you can live without going back into sin. If you don't believe it, that is faith right there. And then you walk towards it. And all the friends that have been hindering your spiritual progress, you jettison them, you cut them off. The places you have been used to going, that, uh, uh, and the friendship you used to have, you cut off everything. Faith. Maybe the properties you have in your house that do not allow you to stand for God. All the worldly stuff with which you embellish yourself that you have been keeping. Now when you come to church, you come in one way. When you're outside, you're a different person. You are a two-faced man, a two-faced woman. You get rid of everything. And then you say, I am for Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. I am married to Jesus, Satan, leave me alone. My husband is coming to take me away to everlasting home. We will not be here forever. Amen? Amen. You get rid of all those things uh, through the word of God that will keep and sustain you. The love of God. You need the word of God. These are the method by which we grow. And most of these things you have to do your own part. Some will say, I'm not growing in this church. The same word that is growing others is the same word you are hearing that you are not growing. Listen. Sun comes from God. Shines on everything. The sun, when it comes upon an ice, what happened to the ice? It melts. The same sun comes upon clay. When it comes upon the clay, what happened? It's hardened. It's the same sun. It depends on the objects on the ground. It depends on the state of your heart. It depends on the expectation of your heart. It depends on what you are doing in life. They say, the youth in this church, what is wrong? Ah, there are youth in this same church that are getting born again. That are getting transformed. That are even serving the Lord. The Lord will touch you. The Lord will transform you. We grow and mature by patience. By patience, I told you earlier on, sometimes you discipline some people and they are not patient enough to receive it. We grow by enduring temptation. We grow in grace. We grow in the work of God. We grow in spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts. I can tell you, uh, today, people see me and uh, uh, they say everywhere, uh, God is using him. Praise God and God will use you also in Jesus' name. But do I tell you this? When I was just about maybe a year old in the faith, about one year old in the faith, maybe at the most two years, I was confronted with a situation and I was alone with the individual. Of course, somebody else, whatever I say, I'm alone. I mean, there was no spiritual leader, mature person, just a new Baby in Christ, the person just gave up the ghost. Exercise of faith. And I did not say, let me go and run to call any deeper life anywhere. 
Any pastor anywhere, actually, if you are going to, going to call the pastor, maybe it may take you one week to reach the pastor. You know what I did? Exercise of faith. New believer. I stood and I called upon the name of the Lord. I took authority and that individual came back to life. Exercise of faith. Exercise of faith. I remember I had some messages in the church. And I said to myself, if God is using my pastor, God can use me. And what are they following the following day or so, I can't remember. And then I got on the street and I knew opposite my office, there used to be a mentally sick person, crazy, mad, always in rags. That is there. And then I went there openly. It was an open place, not hidden place. It was a bus stop. And then I went there. I lost sight of the crowd of the people. And I went to, to, to the individual and I grabbed her by one hand and I laid my hands and prayed. Exercise of faith. If I have time, I will tell you things as a young believer. And I tell you, the Bible says that these signs have followed them that believe. In my name, you will cast out devils. You know, in our church today, when you talk about deliverance, it's like it's a no-go area. A no-go area. And I can tell you, many people have lost cans that you come and we pray for them and the demon will flee. We flee. When people talk against this like that, maybe they are under the manipulation of the devil themselves. The Bible say, in his name you will cast out devil. But you don't want to talk, to talk about casting out devil. He said, in his name you will speak with new tongue. In his name, when you lay your hands upon the sick, what is going to happen? But you know what? Let us say, okay, if you are sick here, come, let's lay hands on you. Well, thank God, you people here, you are more matured. But because this message is going beyond you, I have to get into all these things. Some, you lay hands on, but they say, no, that is not our style. Which is your style? Our style is the style of the Bible. I said our style is the style of the Bible. And heaven and earth may pass away, but not John, Jot, or teaching of the word of God will pass unfulfilled. There is somebody here that God is going to use. Who is that individual? Who is that person? The anointing of God is coming upon somebody. And it doesn't matter, pay attention, whether you are old or young, whether you are man or woman, God can use you. And I declare today, God will use you in Jesus' name. Did I not tell you? The Bible says that we be no more toes, toe and fro. The Bible says that we all come to the knowledge of faith. Last, uh, what is it called? Young adult. I exercise of faith. But it begins with righteousness and holiness, purity and uprightness. Because pay attention, if your life is not right with God, you want to perform miracle, the devil will slap your face. The demons will get into you. Go and read it. There is a particular country, there is somebody who said he was a pastor. Who went on the roadside like I went on the roadside, laying hands upon a mad person. He also did the same thing and the spirit in that mad person got into him. Why the mad person was there clothed, this pastor became, he tore up the clothes, became naked, and sat down next to the person. Demons will not possess you. Evil spirit will not take over your life. In the name of Jesus. And that is why when sometimes we want to pray for some people that are having some serious demonic issue, and somebody, I don't care whether you're a pastor or a pastoress or, or pastor nun. And they say, Pastor, can you please excuse me? Immediately, I excuse them. I surely do. I'm not kidding. 
We're praying for somebody here one day. I didn't plan to pray for the person. I was just saying that, okay, you have to come back with great time to pray for you. But uh, before I let you go, just uh, I plan to just to pray uh, like one minute prayer and then send the person away. Before I finish the one minute prayer, the person was on the floor. And I said, I have a meeting coming up. I don't have time for this. To cut a long story short. I called some people and uh, when one of them came around, saw the person doing like this on the floor. What animal does like this? I said, brother, please let us lay hands on this animal. Ah. <laughs> Amen? I don't blame him. Oh. <laughs> the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. And I told the young adult, I said, if you are born again, if you are a child of God, the grace of God is upon your life. And I want to demonstrate something today. I told them. Some of them are here. They are hearing me. I said, I can pray for the people, but I'm teaching you something. They didn't plan for it. They didn't prepare for it. They didn't know anything about it. And I'm sharing this with you to know that you don't have to even fast and pray forever before God uses you. We're in a program. And then I said, we are going to minister to people today. You are going to pray for people. You will call them out, and then the president said, Pastor, I think I shared this with you before. The president said, Pastor, will you be the one to call them? I said, no, you are the president. You go there. You tell them, if you have issues in your life, you have need in your life, you need prayers in your life, come out. You are going to be prayed for. I said, don't say it is young adults that you pray for young adults. Just say you'll be prayed for. I know the people will be expecting that, oh, the overseer is here. He's going to pray for us. I said, don't say it is this people. Just said you'll be, just say you'll be prayed for. Tell them. And then they came out in, the, in, in large number. And then the young adults themselves, they came around. They began to pray for them. And they were shocked to see what God began to do through them. Many of them never witnessed that before. That is what I'm saying. These signs shall follow them that believe. The scripture cannot be broken. Amen? He will use you. I said he will use you in the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 4 again, verses 13 to 16. Till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, to the same measure of of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slate of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. You will not be deceived in Jesus' name. Second Peter 3, 18, we read it before, but grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to whom be glory both now and forever. And the church says... Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 3. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. We'll get there. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead work and of faith towards God, of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. There is time for everything. Grow in grace. Grow in grace. Uh, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, verse 32. He tells us, and now, brethren, who are brethren? Born again redeemed of the Lord, washed in the blood of Jesus, free from sin, following the Lord, faithful in all things. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. You'll be built up. And to give you an inheritance among all them that are sanctified. You'll be sanctified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And finally, finally, what is the motive? Why spiritual maturity? Why growing in the faith? We need to understand that when there is growth and maturity in the church, both the believers and the world at large benefit from it. When we come to full age, 
There are many things, understand, that parents generally will reserve for only their grown-up children. For grown-up children. Even in a royal family, infants are excluded, excluded from certain responsibilities and privileges. Many years back, when my son was, I don't remember what age now, but very, very young, maybe around 10 years old, he came one day and said, Dad, I said, yes, son. He said, do you know I can drive your car? I said, no, you cannot. He said, try me. <laughs> I said, no, son, I won't try you. He was not matured for that at that point in time. When the time came, I taught him how to drive. When the time came, I didn't just teach him. I bought him his own car. Now, he doesn't need anybody to teach him. He doesn't need anybody to buy him anything. He buys for himself and does whatever he wants to do. There is time for everything. Amen? There is time for everything. And God will give us understanding in Jesus' name. In God's family, immaturity prevents us from enjoying our full privileges and rights. When we grow in holiness, in love, in obedience, in self-denial, in faithfulness, in faith, in prayerfulness, and consecration, we then will be able to conform to the very image of Christ. Image of Christ. When we mature, it will be a blessing to our generation. When we mature, we we'll become tools and vessels unto honor in the hand of the Lord. When we have this maturity, we'll be able to serve our generation as God has ordained for us to be in Jesus' name. And uh, this maturity, this maturity is the will of God for you, is the will of God for me. It has a lot of benefits. When you are mature, the pastor doesn't have to do everything alone. Your section leader does not have to do everything. And when you are matured, you see God using you. I can tell from my personal life, different levels, different levels, different challenges, different opportunities, different privileges. When you are maturing, it's like going to school. When you are done with this class, you get promoted. Somebody here will be promoted. Amen. I said somebody will be promoted in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So we need to understand and understand very well that church membership, how long you have been in the church, water baptism, knowledge of the Bible doctrine, and beliefs are not maturity. They can help if you are ready to mature. Punctuality in the church. For how long will you have been with the church, or even activities in the church, does not translate into baptism, I mean, into maturity. Being able to answer questions very well during question and answer time. Being able to sing very well. Having a position or title does not mean maturity. How old you are, I told you earlier on, does not translate into maturity. Dressing well, I told you, do certain things you can learn. Sounding spiritual does not translate into spirituality. Ability to talk coherently like Apollos does not translate into maturity. Academic success or whatever degree you have is not maturity. Closeness to the leader, it may be if you are a family member of the leader, or your wealth, you are so rich, you give money, you help people, that is not maturity. I partake in the Lost Supper. It's not maturity. I told you earlier on, maturity is ad adulthood and the faith. Maturity is 
gracefulness. You are full of grace. Maturity has to do with your patience, your endurance, your communication, your attitude, and your wisdom, the knowledge and understanding that you have, how you apply all these things. Because knowledge without understanding will lead you into foolishness. Foolishness. When you are matured, you understand what submission is all about. Submission. You understand what humility is all about. What cooperation and working together is about. You understand uh, dedication and you understand what it means to take correction. In all of this and through all of this, the Lord will help us. The Lord will keep us. This is part of the duty of the church. To be sure that every member of the church grow in grace. How many people really, really want to grow in grace? Rise upon your feet. You are new in the church. Maybe I've said some things that are too hard for you to understand. Don't worry. When you grow up, you will understand. When you mature, you will do better than I'm doing. It is the will of God for you to be your best for God. As a leader, are you contented with your current situation? Are you satisfied? No. I am still growing, and you must grow. Every living thing grow. The question is, are you born again? I'm not asking whether you have been long in the church. I'm not asking whether you have position in the church. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, now I say that the hair, as long as it's a child, differeth nothing from a servant. Though he be lord of all, but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. Growing grace. Growing grace. Paul said we all come in the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the son of God unto a perfect man. If you are praying, you have to close your eyes and pray. It's part of the training so that you can concentrate on what you are praying about without distraction. Without distraction. You want to be like Caleb that God said he's of a special spirit. Caleb, because of the Spirit of God in him, followed the Lord fully. Second Timothy chapter 2 says, Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, commit thou to matured men, Commit that to grown up men who shall be able to teach others also. So then endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ. He said, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him which has chosen him to be a soldier. No man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this life. What entanglement is there in your life? If a man strive for mastery, he's, he's not crowned. Except he strive lawfully. 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 Fading away like the stars of the morning. Loosen their stars in the glorious sun. Thus shall we all pass from the earth and its toiling, only remembered by what we have done. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what we have done for Christ will stand, will last. 
Eternity is getting by day by day. Be a blessing, be a blessing, be a blessing, be a blessing. Grow in grace and build up others. Grow in grace and be a blessing to others. Grow in grace and gladden the heart of the Father. Grow in grace and be a mold for others to emulate. In Jesus' name we pray. All eyes remain closed. I spent well over one hour ministering today. What will it profit you if after this kind of ministration you leave this place without the assurance of salvation? You leave this place just with the knowledge that puffs up. You leave this place without repentance. Well, you leave this place without heaven coming into your soul. You leave this place religious. You leave this place the same way you came. It will not be so. Christ must come in. And at this point, you are that humble man, you are that humble woman. You are that humble girl, you are that humble boy who is saying, Lord Jesus, I want my sins forgiven. I want to be a child in the family of God. If you raise up your hand, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. Thank you, thank you. Yes, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Those of you with your hands up, lay those hands upon your chest. Quietly. Say, Lord Jesus. Just say it quietly. I am that man. I am that woman. I am that child standing in the need of prayer. I have seen myself in the light of your world. I do not want to die this way. Just as I am. Lord, I come. I repent of my sin. I'm sorry for them. Lord, I pray, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Keep on praying. Have mercy upon me. Forgive me, Lord. I'm tired of this rising and falling. I'm tired of this wayward life. I need a new beginning. A personal relationship with you. Keep on praying. People see me, but they don't know me. But you created me. You know me within and without. You know my weaknesses. You know my frailty. Help me, Lord. I have tried and failed. Today, I come for mercy. I come for mercy. I come for mercy. I come for mercy. I plead the blood of Jesus. I surrender to you.
Lord Jesus, I surrender to you. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Thank you, Father. For you said, though my sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though like crimson, it shall be like wool. I'm willing, Lord. I'm ready, Lord. For this change. For this new life. I surrender. Take over my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Keep your hand on yourself, Father. Thank you for all these brothers and sisters, the young and the old, that are opening the doors of their heart unto you. For you say, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in unto him. I will sup with him and he with me. I pray today, Father, that all these brothers and sisters welcoming you will receive complete and total forgiveness in Jesus' name. Grant unto them total pardon for all their sins in Jesus' name. Give unto them the grace to live above self. To live above situation. To live above sin. And to prevail over the enemy of their soul, the devil, in Jesus name. The grace. To begin to enjoy the benefits of new life. Give unto them in Jesus name. Give them the joy of salvation. Thank you father for answering. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, I now pray for everybody that nobody here will be spiritually stagnant. Nobody here will be spiritually retrogressing. Father, our eyes will be on you. Our faith will be in you. Our faithfulness will be unto you. Lord God, we declare today that everything we need to grow, give unto us in Jesus' name. Personal prayer life, personal commitment, personal Bible study, humility and meekness of the spirit. Lord, patience and endurance in every situation. Submission and total yieldedness. Father, grant unto us in Jesus' name. Cut us off from anything and everything that distracts us and hinders us from growing in Jesus' name. Do something new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.